the Chicago Bears hat. Otherwise, it doesn't count. I didn't realize that was like a a necessary step. For yep, me, yep. <laughs> it is. I have to have a hat. It's I don't just know the why. Play it. It's not the yeah. Exactly. God, I got so much junk on my desk. All right, cool. I All need right, guys. to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, um, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, everybody's gonna get a chance to um, introduce their characters here shortly. Um, but in the interest of uh, posterity. Um, Hello, everyone, and welcome. If you're watching this um, or watching this later, uh, my name is The Prankster, and I'm joined by my EU friends. And uh, why don't we let our EU friends introduce themselves before going any further? Who wants to go first? And do we have to? What? Well, volunteered. Hello, I'm not Irish. I'm going to be playing Bo. I'm a military person, and I personally have. No experience with the military, so this is gonna be fun. Yep. Should be a good time. Oh, so. Nice. Who else? Ah, uh, I'm our Lord Deputy. I'm playing Constance, who is really smart, so that's gonna be really different from real life, because <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least. That's a lie. <laughs> that is a lie. <laughs> And I'm Ayana. I'm going to be playing some not very bright intelligence case handler. <laughs> yeah. A not very rude. Screwed. She's. I mean, she's she's not dumb completely, but she's not. But she's not smart. <laughs> and my name is uh, the Prankster, and I will be your friendly neighborhood GM this morning. Today, whatever whatever time you're at. Tonight. <clears throat> All right. We open our scene. We open our game, and it is uh, outside. You can hear um, people drilling in the distance. Um, and when I say people drilling, I mean there are soldiers being given orders uh, by some type of uh, sergeant or somebody who is in a higher command. Um, I imagine that you can hear uh, various soldiers as they're kind of uh, running on dirt. Yeah, that, that sound from a person's boot as they, as they hit the dirt. And it's a crisp uh, fall day. The sun is shining outside, um, which looks to be almost blocked fairly soon by the uh, clouds that seem to be gathering in the distance. Nonetheless, you could probably see like a, a, a shop from up top as you look uh, overhead at this entire uh, military area. Soldiers moving, probably vehicles, all manner of people who are uh, uh, working for that day. However, the camera starts to slowly pan in on a uh, one particular uh, female soldier who appears to be uh, in the armory cleaning her weapon for that day. Irish, why don't you go ahead and describe to us what Bo looks like? Okay, let me have a look at my notes because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I was going to be like, yep. And if it helps, uh, I'm going to be asking this question of everybody in a moment. So just so you're aware. My character sheet's open now. Okay, you see a brown haired woman, about 5'8 in height, but you can't really tell because she's humped down cleaning stuff right now. Uh, she's got her hair pulled into a bun. Uh, sharp features across her face. Yeah, she's covered in military gear. She's got a, a, a jacket off, so she's in that like tan top. Uh, she's got her tattoos all down her left arm. Um, and dog tags hanging off, hanging down her chest. As we see the scene of this woman who's cleaning the gun, um, it's not a moment 
another moment passes before we see kind of in the uh, bottom part of a screen, if you imagine this is like a television or, or movie, and it almost slowly types out Manchester. Um, as that yellow type kind of like fades into the background, um, we see another higher ranking officer moving up to Bo. Um, Bo. Um, you have new orders. Apparently you need to report to Bradford for um, some type of a counter-terrorism operation. And he hands you a piece of paper. I will take the paper. Yeah, I imagine you nod at the person uh, as indicating that you've received it and yeah. they slowly leave. Um, you open it and it seems kind of odd to you. Um, you are apparently required to report to uh, Nelson Street in West Yorkshire um, at the Bradford Fire Station um, for some type of a counterterrorism operation. Um, in there, they uh, put a few different things that kind of pique your interest and make you think that this is more than just normal orders, leading you to believe that this is possibly because of your affiliation with the secretive uh, group called uh, Delta Green. They talk about uh, how you're a special operator and your expertise will be needed in, the, in, in uh, evaluating a possible uh, threat uh, to the homeland. What do you do? I guess I'll be taking my orders and then start packing up, I guess. All right. We begin packing up. And uh, as time goes by, we see a fade out from that scene into another scene. This one is, I imagine, in some type of a cubicle in kind of an office area. Maybe not a cubicle. You probably have an, an office of sorts. You're you're sitting there uh, uh, listening to some type of communique. Uh, Aya, why don't you describe to us what your character looks like? Okay. Um, she's pretty average looking. You know, there's nothing really that stands out about her. She's blonde. She's average height. Well, slightly above average, maybe five eight ish. Hair pulled back in a low ponytail, and she's got glasses. She could be a librarian. She could be anybody, anywhere. She's pretty, you know. Like I say, pretty average, but she's got a bit of a serious, yeah, inquisitive look on her face. You know, she's 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 heard some stuff. Um, so yeah, yeah. And the yellow type at the uh, bottom begins to uh, type in, it just says London, before uh, fading away. You're going through uh, various messages and information. You can kind of smell the smell of, it's, you know how like, uh, it just smells clean. Like it's been cleaned recently. Uh, maybe the light, fluorescent light is kind of like flickering overhead every now and then, bringing you no small source of consternation. Um, something that you felt before. Maybe you, like lean back for a moment and stretch. You've been sitting for a long time uh, until finally you get a phone call on your um, on the phone at your desk. Hello there. Okay. Do you take the call? Yeah, I pick it up and I just wait to hear who's on the other side, other end. I don't say anything. Yeah. Um, it immediately comes out to you, a voice in Gaelic, um, which is a language that you do understand. Nice. <laughs> uh, indicating um, your assistance is needed in Bradford for a counterterrorism operation. You'll need to meet at the Bradford Fire Station, located at Nelson Street in West Yorkshire. Things have been cleared with the higher-ups. You're going there for a counterterrorism operation. Before, you just hear a click. 
You haven't been affiliated with Delta Green too long now, but you know that they don't always uh, give everything right off the bat. And the immediacy of everything leads you to believe it's probably the organization calling you in for work. I hang up the phone and tidy up bits and pieces on my desk and head towards my car. We fade out. Finally, I imagine um, we come to a different scene this time. A a small restaurant, probably, uh, with people um, all about kind of like milling. You can, you can kind of like hear like the slow murmur of, of talk as people are conversing with one another. Uh, every now and then, like a, a barista over the counter, like you hear that frothing machine. Um, it feels like a very alive atmosphere. Um, and while it feels very alive, we see somebody uh, sitting in the corner, kind of minding their own business. Outlaw. Who do we see, and would you please describe them? Uh, well, uh, there's there's Constance sitting at the table, probably having a nice, nice coffee. Uh, she's she's pretty tall, but you know, sitting down, you can't really tell. Um, she's got her hair pulled up, her brown hair in a in a bun that's falling apart because she's had a, a head sort of dealt, knelt over, reading constantly. Uh, she's probably got a couple books out right now. And Constance is an author, correct? She likes to think of herself as one. She definitely isn't a published author. All right, that's fair. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, then I imagine uh, at this particular time, you are in the UK uh, at a conference in Birmingham before returning home for New York. Uh, This is kind of like a small, you're out for lunch, essentially. taking a moment uh, of your time um, as you're there the a waiter comes over to you which doesn't seem too out of normal except for the fact that this place has no waiters or waitresses to speak of um, they slowly take a uh, they have their uh, their platter on their hands and uh, just kind of gives you a small paper and just says ma'am your bill and hands it to you before walking off as you look at your bill uh, you see uh, information on there that seems to not make any sense for what is going on Uh, it occurs to you that Delta Green does work through kind of conspiratorial channels and that they're probably trying to communicate with you in this particular instance um on the receipt, you read some of the same information that uh, our other um, Bo and uh, Sienna have also received. Uh, Nelson Street, Bradford, um, West Yorkshire, England. Counterterrorism operation, your expertise is needed. Seems like something I should read pretty privately and slowly get on my way. All right. As time passes by, um, I imagine all three of you make your way to the fire station in Bradford. And I want to point out, even though you guys would have, well, I don't know, maybe you would. Um, this is an actual image of the fire station in Bradford. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Not going to lie, never been to the fire station in Bradford. No, Fair enough. My, I I've might been. have been there when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try and make this as immersive as I can. Um, that looks like the I accidentally the drew on the fire station. I don't know how to get rid of it. Can't believe you drew on government property, Irish. How I was trying you? to move. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> I can take care of that. 
And that's I'm fine. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that's even better that you've actually been there. That's hilarious. And it turns out she drew on it then, too. <laughs> <laughs> I might have. I was a kid. I'm pretty sure I've got like... Because my, 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 my great grand and granddad lived down in Yorkshire. And uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they took me there once when I was a little, little kid. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Well... As um, as you kind of uh, uh, gather all together, you can hear the sounds of the city come alive. Uh, the various, uh, whether it be the cars on the street or people uh, walking with their children in tow, some in strollers. Um, imagine every now and then uh, the light pauses and people have to wait to walk across the street. How are you all getting there? Are you all driving yourselves? Are you all taking a, a cab, train? How? So would I have been there with a, like a company or just myself? You would. You would have. You are being dispatched to this uh, particular fire station as just yourself, no one else. Okay, I, I probably would have taken a car or something. Fair enough. Now, I know that the rules surrounding firearms in the UK are a bit more stringent than the United States. <laughs> I've never seen a real gun in my life. <laughs> I have, but only on policemen at like Kings Cross Station. Right. I heard that research people are allowed to carry RPGs with them, and I would like one, please, thank you. <laughs> I would like to see the article on that. Thank you very much. Uh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Better get right in. Get those receipts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's very safe. I think it's safe to assume, um, Bo, you probably have um, your military person specifically being, uh, you have the clearance and the, the essentially you've been cleared to have weapons um, with the car that you're taking. Um, I would also say the same for Sienna. Uh, Constance, however, I think, uh, unfortunately, you probably do not have any such clearance. It's fine. I have pepper spray. <laughs> sure. And that's totally legal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you've got some nice knives at home. <laughs> at home in New York, yeah. <laughs> in time you make your way towards uh you make your way into the fire station i imagine there's some uh firefighters uh who are there uh kind of uh perplexed uh you tell them why you're there for this particular counterterrorism thing they kind of look at one another and and maybe a chief or captain uh, comes over they kind of nod hand wave it and in time you're kind of escorted up to a uh to a conference room of sorts upstairs. Um, it is there. It's there in that particular conference room. You see <clears throat> before you um, a man who's dressed in a uh, uh, perfect suit, um, waiting there at the uh, head of the conference table, uh, just ever so quietly. A second here. Just over here, actually. Yeah, you can you can sit right there the next to the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, you all slowly take a moment to sit in your chairs, and I imagine um, all of you have. You all know one another to some extent through Delta Green. Perhaps you have, uh, perhaps there's some type of like introductory thing. Um, maybe you kind of met yourselves there. With that said, you have a general idea. Uh, you know that Delta Green is here to essentially protect uh, the world uh, against uh, extra terrestrial or, or threats from the unknown. Threats that can't quite make it out into the public eye. The same types of things that children tell in, in like scary bedtime stories. Um, and there might be like a hint of truth to them. As you all take a moment to sit in your various seats, 
uh, the man at the head of the table uh, stands up uh, and introduces himself as Henry Taylor. Uh, hello and um, welcome. We are glad that you are here and glad that you could come so expeditiously. Let me get right to the point. There's a former Delta Green operative whose name is uh, Clyde Bowman. Um, unfortunately, he has passed away. This really isn't too difficult of a task, and we think this is a great introductory uh, mission for you to take with Delta Green. We need you to go to his home to remove any evidence of Delta Green's activities, if there is any. We need you to do this as quickly as possible. Uh, Bowman's heirs are expected within 48 hours, so we mean, need to make certain that everything is clean by then. Do you understand the basics of this mission thus far? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. You involve no one else in this operation. And within 48 hours, we will return here uh, to meet, and you can report on exactly what you have found and uh, what needed to be cleaned up. Now, if you find signs that Bowman has violated Delta Green security, we will need you to report that so we can take action accordingly. <clears throat> now, I have a small uh, cursory uh, ha uh, dossier to give you. If uh, somebody would go ahead and read that for me, I'd appreciate it. Hey, Constance has got a book club, so, you know. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, this is the summary of report on Clyde Bowman. Day of birth, 28th of March, 1945. Family, wife, Marlene. Oh, that's a lot of dates. Let's skip over the date, shall we? Uh, daughter, Sharon, and son, Michael. Now, his occupation was at the HM Revenue and Cup. Oh my god, I can't, I can't read. Revenue and Customs, and uh, as a retired Assistant Deputy Commissioner for Operational Support. Oh, he was active with... Now, you would know when group? it says active with group, it's essentially, you know, Delta Green doesn't put anything down mm -hmm. in writing if they, if they can get away with it. And so when it mm. says the group, you would understand that to mean Delta Makes Green. Sense. He was active with uh, with the group from 1967 to 1970, taking part in 11 operations. It's well, quite a lot of operations. Numerous consultations with a specialty in taxation and property confiscations. No current associations with the group. And it seems we've got keys down here as well. Yes, there's a key to his, uh, essentially his apartment um, in the top right corner of the report. There, we would also find an address to his apartment in uh, Bradford, which apparently is in a small, uh, declining, yet working-class neighborhood. Okay. Do you have any questions before you uh, to uh, proceed? I do have one. Yes, Miss Bow. Um... If we do find out that he has somehow compromised information, do we come back straight away or continue searching until we've searched the entire property? Uh, um, what do you want us to do? I would like for you to take care of this as much as you possibly can by yourselves. Should you need assistance, please do not hesitate to call. And he gives you kind of like a has in his palm kind of like slides onto the middle of the conference room a small uh, cell phone it looks to be a burner phone which you would know like not really connected to much anything else if you need to contact me you can contact me on that phone and that phone only it only has one number um, uh, in it and it is his phone 
Um, and it doesn't even say his uh, full name. It says, it just says uh, HT, which you know would stand for Henry Taylor. Actually, no, it just says Handler. Because that is what uh, these types of uh, Delta Green agents are known as. The ones that kind of like give missions, they, they're the handler. Um, so if you need to get in contact with me, you can get a hold of me at that number. Okay. I do have another question. Yes. What was his death? It was like, was it any, uh, was it suspicious or was it just like? Age, um, as far as we understand it, uh, Mr. Bowman died of uh, natural causes. Um, uh, we know that it uh, may have actually been a few days before he was actually found. Everything surrounding his death appears to be um, inconspicuous. All right. This is mostly a cleanup operation, just to make certain former Delta Green agents are not, um, have not compromised the organization in any way. That's good to me. Yeah, makes sense. You got it. Excellent. All right. If there are no other questions, then I will let you get back to your business and we will meet back here in 4,800 hours. And as he says that, I imagine at the bottom of the screen, there's yellow type that just says uh, October 5th, 2022. Oh my God, that's today. <gasps> and then it says, uh, and then it says uh, uh, eight o'clock uh, p.m. And then it like oh just, my God. it just ticks over to like the next second and minute before fading away into the background. We're in the future. One minute oh into the future. It's, it's okay. <laughs> We've got till Friday, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, I'm gonna go get some dinner, bye. <laughs> yeah, one night on the piss. <laughs> Alright, you guys have your, uh, you have your uh, mission before you. Uh, you have all of the information. You have the address for where uh, uh, you are to go. Um, we're pretty much hand-waving equipment, whatever you have on you, um, you pretty much have on you. Um, if you have a car, especially if it's portable, can definitely assume that you have it on you. Um, you just tell me, uh, I know that Bo said she has brought her vehicle. Has, uh, did Sienna or Constance take their own personal vehicles, or will you all be going in Bo's personal vehicle? Constance came I the train. drove, I drove down, up, up. Too, but um yeah i don't know what sort of vehicle have you got though i don't know i'm guessing it's probably just something from the military <laughs> hey, I, can I, get a, can I, get a, I uh didn't drive here <laughs> kind of awkward we're we're taking your train hooray <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so Bo, uh you probably have um some type of suv uh, yeah. that would be able to hold all, everything that you have uh, Sienna you probably have a car so it all just depends mm -hmm. on which you guys would prefer to utilize what is uh, less suspect or more I, hmm, I don't know well I was thinking yeah I know I know what you're saying it's an SUV uh, though so, but yeah. if we need to actually you know get rid of anything or you know remove anything Try. from his place having a bigger vehicle might be more beneficial well volunteered bow thanks yay bow drives yeah we could we could take my car all right bow you decide to take bow's uh vehicle um after some time you drive off towards uh bradford and it's a um, you're, you're in Bradford, so it's not too terribly far, maybe about a half an hour just to, you know, navigate, find directions, that type of thing. Uh, so not a terrible amount of time, uh, passes before you're able to get to outside of, uh, the apartment, uh, 
of Clyde Bowman. You see, um, the building is kind of a jarring example of early 1960s design, blocky and drab. As you kind of look around, uh, what's everybody's awareness, just so I'm aware? Uh, where do I find that? Uh, that'll be a, one of your skills on your character sheet. Is it alertness? Yes, alertness is what I meant uh, to say. My apologies. 70. Oh, okay. 70. All right, cool. I'm not even going to make oh. you guys roll it. Uh, Bo, you're always on high alert. And uh, as you're looking around, you don't see any uh, cameras or anything like that to be uh, wary of. <clears throat> Could we tell from the address to see what floor it would be on? Uh, yeah, it appears to actually be on the uh, second floor. Okay. Uh, American oh. second floor or UK second floor? <laughs> That's a good point. Because in yeah, the UK, this would be the second floor. floor. In the US, yeah. this would be the second floor. Then it is, I I, I said the, the second floor. So yeah, the UK, the second floor. We're in the UK. Sweet. Up the top. All right. All right. You make your way into the apartment building, and it doesn't really seem like uh, many people are super um, nervous about your presence or anything like that. It looks like you can kind of just get in inconspicuously. Um, let's see here. And so you make your way up to the second floor, uh, an apartment uh, 203 and make your way inside. Just inside the door, um, you see a ring of labeled keys. You see the kitchen. You see uh, just kind of a, some decent uh, furnishings. It appears to be a well-worn couch, faces an art. Uh, a small television that is on the wall appears to only have a limited basic cable on the adjacent uh, coffee table are a stack of mostly completed crossword puzzle books um, issues of uh, Reader's Digest and uh, various uh, football magazines um from the various teams around the area. You also see a box of unhealthy artificial donuts, which are now crumbling and dry. Ew. Lovely. The adjoining kitchen is mostly bare with a spattering of cans, pans, and boxes, and the only human touch is a, some type of drawing on the refrigerator. Uh, there's some other rooms, but I'll let you explore this area, and you tell me what you guys would like to do next. I want to look at the keys. Sure. You do that, Bo. Have fun. Um, you <laughs> look at the keys uh, just as you walk inside, and you uh, see uh, various uh, ones that are, you know vehicle um, maybe it didn't have a ton maybe like a small uh, foot locker and uh, one that's also labeled cabin no safe keys <laughs> say what no safe keys like <laughs> no safe keys <laughs> damn it <laughs> <laughs> um i w would probably come back to us early a time but for the meantime i want to just look at like the top crossword puzzle and make sure that th some of the answers <laughs> make sense you know what i mean no no not because of that yeah it's pretty yeah. easy to find stuff in it and she knows that yeah but you don't yeah you want to make certain he isn't like snapped one. and isn't just mm -hmm. writing like uh red well, it's rum, just it's red a rum, lot red of rum. crossword puzzles you know what i mean uh yeah so you're just gonna take a look at the top one it's something that's gonna bug her but for now it, she's just glancing over it it's actually really smart <laughs> yeah you take yeah. a look at the, the cross kind of thing she'd know you take a look at yeah that makes absolute sense for your character yeah uh, she takes a look well, at it, the cross I, yeah 
she uh, takes a look at the crossword puzzles and yeah, no, they're completed correctly. Um, guy seemed to be a what a smart guy. Yeah, a oh ton of them. Oh my god, what kind of person actually finishes crossword puzzles? <laughs> my grand. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he is kind of getting on a bit. A little He's bit. dead now. Oh, sorry. Well, it became... Oh, no, wow. no, 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 Gran. Oh, oh, my bad. <laughs> this guy's guy dead. Yeah. <laughs> my granny is very much alive, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I love my granny. Okay. Uh, how else would you... What else would you guys like to look at? Well, what else would you like to check out? What would you like to do? I'd like to have a look through the kitchen drawers because, you know, if it's anything like if you, yeah, if you anybody like else, they shove paperwork and stuff in the drawers <laughs> yeah. out of the way. There's always Got a junk one drawer. Drawer. Junk drawer, yeah. Yeah, one drawer. Manuals like, for like appliances and stuff like that. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. Yeah, you look into the uh, you look into the uh, drawers um, he actually does not have a junk drawer. Um, all of his drawers are, are pretty well organized with just various, uh, kitchen stuff. You don't see anything out of the ordinary. That's pretty out and of the ordinary. And that in itself is out yeah. of the ordinary. That is so weird. <laughs> red flag. <laughs> the super red flag. What do you mean? Everybody has a drink drawer. Yeah, where's the drawer with the random screwdrivers of different sizes? What the heck? We have right? three. We have three junk drawers in our home. It's terrible. <laughs> Every door drawer is a junk drawer. Where do you put the lighters and you know screws and stuff? Yeah, oh my and gosh! The fine. For your for your microwave. <laughs> fine. He has a junk drawer. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so yeah, here's a junk drawer. It's filled with pencils and screwdrivers and uh, instructions for the microwave and all the other mm -hmm. random shit where you don't know where to put. That's a perfect place to put them. <laughs> it seems a lot less suspicious now. I like yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else you guys would like to check out in the uh, kitchen or the living room? Anything else you'd like to do? I want to look out the window. To see what his view was like. Um, mostly just overlooking um, a road in, in, in Bradford. Um, you could kind of see some people walking by every now and then. Your eye is kind of caught by a tree that's uh, bowing a little bit from maybe like a small gust that comes through the streets. A light comes through the window, um, bringing some into this very dark place um, just because uh, all the lights are off. Can we turn a light on? Oh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Does he used to have electric here? I don't know. You turn a light on and the apartment explodes. Like that is that. the end of this oh, adventure. Right <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just want to see. No, wow. I'm just kidding. Okay. No. Uh, light turns <laughs> on, um, illuminating the area uh, for you to be able to see better. You know I that there that's is. That's why you couldn't find the junk drawer at once. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there is a hallway um, um, leading uh, more uh, deeper into the apartment. And then, of course, there is what you see here. Anything else? Can I like to check down the, the sides and the back of the sofa? Sure. Um, you check down the sides and the back of the sofa. Um, and the crack of the sofa is uh, the remote controller. Um, and uh, as you kind of like look underneath the cushions, you know, you find... Uh, Little dust bunnies, maybe some peanuts that had fallen down there. Um, other other snacks that just kind of like fall into the cracks. You don't find anything odd underneath the cushions, nor underneath the sofa itself. Typical. Not even any change down the back of the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Who is oh, this guy? Seems like a normal guy with a junk drawer and change in his sofa. <laughs> so I want to check uh, the cupboards. Mm -hmm. Just take a skim through them, see if there's anything noteworthy. 
Um, yeah, nothing noteworthy in the cupboards. Uh, just kind of like normal, uh, normal food stuffs for a for a person like him. Uh, type of stuff that he likes. Oh, that's lame. Just realized something. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get real bored real quick of looking through the closets and have wandered down the hallway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as you look through the cupboards, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. And so you said you decide to wander down the hallway, Constance? Mm-hmm. Down the hall, you see uh, a linen closet and a small bathroom. Um, you uh, feel like you can... Uh, see that there are also two bedrooms uh, kind of at the end of the hallway uh, opposed to each other. What would you like mm -hmm. to do? Uh, one, I'm going to go into one of the bedrooms. The one on the right. Sure. Let's roll Let's through here. Oh, mm -hmm. God. Okay. Uh, you go into uh, his bedroom, and it holds a, a queen-size bed and a dresser on top, which rests uh, a photograph of, uh, of Clyde and his late wife, Marlene. There's also high school graduation pictures of his two children, a few photos of a grandchild, and a ceramic paperweight of a child's handprint with the name Cassie, age four, crudely painted on it. That's adorable. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, just generally going to carry on looking around the room, like in a, in a what's in here kind of way. Nothing closely looking at yet. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the big things that point that kind of came out to you were the dresser, uh, the bed, uh, the chair in the corner. Um, some, uh, it was maybe like a little bit messy, but not too terribly messy. I uh, had an end table, a light. Um, maybe there's some more, uh, uh, like, uh, word searches and kind of like other games like that and crossword puzzles kind of like stacked next to his nightstand. Hit a few books as well. Um, kind of on the uh, nightstand as well. Just things that he was reading. No, okay. I'm gonna uh, just have a look around the uh, the photographs. Sure. Now you take a moment, uh, just kind of like looking into the various photographs. Now let's go ahead and switch back to um, Sienna and Bo. What are you guys doing? I'm gonna follow Constance down the hallway, but uh, check out the linen closet. Sure. You look in the linen closet. And it's pretty basic. Nothing really stands out to you. Um, just a normal linen closet with a, maybe like an ironing board and, uh, uh, and, a, and a, uh, some shelves for various linens. Bo, how about you? What are you doing? I'm going to take a look around, like a really close look around the wall ceiling underneath the table sure. anything like um maybe uh like i, I can't remember what the couch you know the little uh, like microphones or anything you know just something out so of the ordinary you're doing a sweep essentially to look for any yeah. type of like surveillance yeah. absolutely go ahead and roll me a search this will be our first roll of the game yeah fellas Ooh. Ooh. Oh, you can do it. Oh, eighty-eight. <laughs> you can't do it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a critical fail. Um, as you're looking through, um, you find no surveillance equipment uh, that you can see, and you, you know, check everything. Um, I imagine, though, that you're not being very um, gentle. And that's kind of, that's that's how I will, um, that's how this fumble will become manifest, essentially, is you're kind of like, you're just making a lot of noise. Um, I imagine you're making so much noise that Sienna and Constance uh, hear you. 
don't mind me just searching for stuff. <laughs> but yeah, you don't <laughs> yeah. Find... my head around the door and be like, you, you okay? Did you fall? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Don't, don't mind me. <laughs> you don't okay. find anything out of the ordinary, but uh, as because you are doing such a thorough search, you do uh, see uh, the drawing on the fridge. In a moment, in a moment's time, you do hear a knocking at the door. Hello, hello, is, this, is anyone in there? Hello, hey, you guys enter the door and pretend to be. I'm going Can't to wait. call the police. No one should be in there. Yeah, I'm just going to stick my head around the bedroom door where Constance is and, and motion to her that it, I'm going to get the door and to keep quiet. Mm -hmm. Sure. So in a moment, you make your way towards uh, the front door. Um, I, didn't, I didn't mention this earlier to you or Constance, but the smell of death is kind of in the hallway. Um, you do recall that uh, Mr. Bowman wasn't found for several days. So it doesn't, it's not too striking that uh, his smell, like the smell of death would still kind of linger. Um, you make your way to the front door uh, and open it to see uh, an older woman, maybe in her uh, 60s, with uh, late 60s, we'll say. Um, she has a, a dog in tow and uh, she looks at you and she says, uh, may I ask why you're here? I'm going to call we, the police. Out of interest, do we know what the situation is with his wife? Does she still live here or is she, is she dead? Yes, so that's actually a great question. And that was on the summary report. His wife is, is has passed away. Oh. She passed away uh, 20 years ago. Okay, quite a while then. Yes. Um, I, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I'll, I'll just sort of let her know that I am friends with uh, Sharon, his daughter, and she asked if I could come around and uh, just check up on the place. Oh, Sharon. Ah, I'm certain uh, I know that he'd love to see his daughter, his granddaughter, Cassie, and she kind of like smiles. Go ahead and roll me a persuade check. Because you are telling a lie. That's a fib. Because you're a, <laughs> a liar. Oh, oh my God. Success. So it's only a little <sighs> fib. <laughs> She nods. Yes, yes, yes. No, I, well, uh, yes, I, I have no doubt that the family is uh, going through a difficult time. Um, Mr. Bowman was such a quite kind man. Um, well, I will uh, leave you to it. I didn't mean to, to make a ruckus or anything. Just wanted to make certain, you know, guard our old friend's place. Uh, you are being quite loud in there. So I would suggest maybe keeping it down a bit. I'm just going to apologize and then say, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, well, we'll try and keep it. I'll try and keep it down. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, she nods at you, uh, kind of with smiling eyes, and makes her way off. Um, the apartment is yours again. Constance, um, you're looking at the photographs, and you don't really see anything out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any, any any drawers I can take a look in? Yeah, oh, and you can open so, up. Yeah. You can open up any of the drawers. Go ahead and give me a, a search because I'm I'm assuming you are specifically searching for Ooh. documents or something. <laughs> Why can't I roll right now? Never mind. Uh, it's okay. Failure. Yeah, you're looking through, and you don't find um, you don't find anything. 
seems like anything, normal. Anything, don't find anything. Okay. I mean, you don't find anything out of the ordinary. Okay. You find clothing and, and, and socks and shirts and, you know, the whole nine yards, but uh, nothing odd or out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. Uh, any any bits of paper lying around anywhere? Um. Uh, no, not uh, not a uh, nothing again out of the ordinary. But you do see paper okay. from the books that maybe he was using as bookmarks, uh, temporary bookmarks, that type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um... Any larger areas that could potentially be housing paperwork for instance sure i mean like there is a closet um i'm gonna go ahead and roll your search over um and, or you can roll a new search for it that's fine too you know what go ahead and roll a new search oh. for it because i'm a kind and benevolent mm. Gia. everything seems like it's just a normal closet man just clothing shoes it's nothing out of the ordinary Okay. Okay. Uh, Irish, uh, you have yeah. not really found anything in the kitchen. You haven't seen a, a, anything out of the ordinary from your search. How would you like to proceed? I will make my way to the bedroom that has or the door that hasn't been opened yet. Sure. Um, as you pass by the bathroom, you notice that was it's actually actually yeah because you're your alertness roll or because of your alertness score, you notice it is in a disturbed state. A broken towel rack, a cracked shower door, a few fragments of broken ceramic toothbrush holder swept into a corner. There's also, uh, there also persist faint traces of the smell of uh, Bowman, um, his corpse. You believe that maybe this is where he died. I will hold the scarf up around my nose so I don't smell it, mm -hmm. then walk in the bathroom. Sure. Um, yeah, aside from aside from what I've described, uh, there's really nothing else in here. Um, you think that maybe he had like a heart attack or something as he was getting out of the shower or something like that. Um, natural in that it wasn't doesn't seem like foul play is is the point I was trying to get across from him passing away from natural causes. Okay. And I will head back out, head to the door that I was aiming for. Sure. I, uh, um, how about you? Are you going to be following, uh, Bo, or would you like to do something else? Yeah, no, I'm going to follow Bo. Sure. Is the two of you, and actually I'll throw, um, Constance in here with you to just, you know, so that you're all in the same area at this point. This seems to be kind of like the last area that you've yet to investigate. On the whole, it seems like a pretty normal apartment. Um, you see that this was, uh, other bedroom is used as an office and for storage. There's no computer, um, uh, but there does appear to be like a filing cabinet filled with, uh, papers. Um, uh, a desk also filled with all kinds of uh, notebooks and all manner of things. Um, how would you like, what would you like to do? Well, I'd like to check out the desk and the notebooks. Sure. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead. I'm going to kind of, um, why don't, why don't you give me what, uh, what is y'all's accounting scores? Ten. <laughs> ten. <laughs> ten, ten. How about you, Irish? Ten? Ten. <laughs> ten, yeah, ten. Ten across the board. Great. Um, you all take kind of a big deep breath out, <sighs> realizing that there is just a lot of paperwork here to go through. Um Okay, we've got two days. <laughs> yeah, the three of you decide that you could probably work on it. Uh, if you all work on it together, you could probably go through it pretty quickly. 
Well, not, I mean, not quickly, but you can go through it faster than if it was just one person. Um, so you take some time sorting through all of this various paperwork. A lot of it is receipts. Um, I mean, the man did work in, uh, um, he did work in the, uh, HM, uh, revenue and, uh, customs. So the man had, is any, yeah. is anything written in Latin? No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's all boring ass accounting uh, work, uh, or not all of it. Most of it is though. Uh, receipts. This is how much he paid for rent, so on and so forth. Uh, different government uh, uh, fi- um, uh, paperwork that one needs, like birth certificates and that type of a thing. However, so I'm, I'm going to say about six hours passes. Um, it is about 2 a.m. in the morning at this point in time. Maybe we'll say 3 a.m. in the morning at this point in time. And um, the bottom of the screen, I imagine like we see all three of your uh, characters in this office and there's kind of like time elapsing over six hours. You pulling out different files, looking at it, you know, moving into different positions. Um, it's a six hours later in yellow type at the very bottom of the screen. Um, Cassie. Um, looking through the paperwork, you find out that Bauman, um, owned a cabin in a rural area, uh, north of Bradford in a small town called Laburn. Um, you have the, uh, it's in a very rural area. It's about a four hour drive by car. And the papers uh, give you the address. There is, at this point in time, you feel like you guys have gone through everything as best as you can. You don't feel like there's anything else of note in this apartment. And there's no electronics anyway? Uh, I mean, aside from that like older TV that he had, um, and the I, was, remote I, was, I was on about like like USBs or anything like that, just anything that could hold yeah. information. No. Um, okay. Yeah. Just pretty much just paperwork. No floppy disks. No <laughs> floppy disks. <laughs> uh, sorry, who did you see Red say Red that? Because you said Cassie and. I said, I'm. It's the kid. I meant to say Constance. My apologies. Okay. Constance no, was, was the one that kind of found the information for the uh, Cassie's his granddaughter. My bad. Uh, Constance <laughs> finds the information for the address for the cabin uh, north of Bradford in a small town called Laburn. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show that to the other two. All right. They're aware that you know there is potentially another place to make sure things are okay. I know where the key is. That is true, yeah. Sure. I say we tidy up what we've uh, messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finish up here and and head up there. No, that sounds good to me. Couldn't really find anything. Sure. All right, so it is uh, it is three a.m. when you leave, and it is seven a.m. by the next morning um, as you're driving. So, here's the thing: at this point in time, you guys have been up for twenty four hours plus. Um, your characters are starting to get tired and sleep deprived. So, as a result, unless you do something to alleviate this condition. Um, and you tell me what you'd like to do to alleviate this condition, all of your rolls will be at minus 20% because of the sleep deprivation. How big is your SUV? A bit big enough for everyone to take a little nap. Probably. Not comfortably, but yeah. Just a cuddle puddle? <laughs> hey, Constance has been camping before. This is better than that. <laughs> Okay. Take a nap in the SUV. Naps can Mm. do wonders for you, you know? Okay. 
So, how long will you be sleeping? And uh, where? Just in the SUV? So I'll let you guys talk about that. I'm going to use the bathroom and I will be right back. Okay. You talk about how you'd like to do this rest wise. There is also the option of drugs. Just want to put that out there. And by that, I mean caffeine, uh, some chain smoking, um, and, uh, you know, cocaine. So those are options. Uh, yeah, just, I don't want to carry any cocaine. No. I'm kidding, I didn't no. ask her. <laughs> <laughs> so I say we take a three-hour nap, four hours at most, grab some coffee. Won't it yeah. look a little bit suspicious, like three people just sleeping in a in a, an SUV uh, for that long? It depends where. I mean, we are, should I guess. we just? Should, I mean, we could just look into a hotel. Well, Have you got camping stuff? At Seven a.m. That's true. They're they're kind of crap like that. Yeah. Or do we just go to Costa and power through? I just go to Costa. It's already been 24 hours, though. Willy Willy Wonka says Pog cocaine. (laughs) (laughs) Get it out. All right, so how do you guys want to do this? If you guys want, I can drive, grab some coffee, and you guys can take a nap in the car. That, yeah, I guess that, that works. And then yeah, you can always. Uh, and I can, I can, you know, can drive us there while you guys sleep. Okay. Okay. I think mean, your military right. you're used to being up all, all night, right? Sure. Up a coaster on the way, we'll be fine. Okay. You begin to make your way towards the small town of uh, Layford, uh, north of Bradford, which is about a four-hour drive. Um, it's night, so you probably stop in one of the larger cities that you have to cross through uh, to get there. Um, in this case, excuse me. Um, you have to make your way through Leeds to get to Layford. And so you decide to take a small trip there, hoping for like a 24 hour uh, convenience store type thing. And sure enough, you hit the jackpot and are able to get a lot of caffeine to help uh, carry you. So here's how this is going to work, Irish. Um, Roll me a 1d4. And that is how many hours you will get where you delay the sleep deprivation because of the caffeine. Two. Okay. Um, you make your way uh, towards Layford, and uh, in time, and as uh, this is UK leads, uh, per uh, sorry, person wanted uh, clarification. <clears throat> you make your way towards Layford, uh, and I imagine like the dawn kind of comes in. You're still pretty bleary eyed, Bo, as you make your way through. Um, Eventually, though, the road becomes more rural and more rural, uh, leading to a scene that you kind of see here. Uh, The misty morning fog catching the light and kind of occluding your vision a little bit. Uh, The natural darkness of the forest just because of the tall trees that kind of block out the sun uh, coming through. Constance and Sienna in the back uh, sleeping. What's going through your mind at this time, Bo, as you're making your way towards this cabin? Uh, you know, just trying to block out any any thoughts, really. Just focus on the drive. Just focus on the got drive. Got a mission, and she's got a mission at hand. It's just like she's focused on it. Sure, makes sense. Um. Oops. It 
In time, you come towards the cabin. Uh, and I imagine, like, as the road becomes more rural, it becomes more and more difficult for uh, Constance and Sienna to sleep. So, Constance and Sienna, you got a good amount of sleep, but not a ton. So, roll me a 1d6, and that's how many hours sleep deprivation will be put off for you. If you get a good night's sleep, you never really have to worry about this. All right, so Outlaw 4, I have 1. You slept terribly. <laughs> uh, Sienna is just like, oh, so bleary eyed. Um, but you get to the cabin right about seven. So that's what I'm going to say is when all of this kind of kicks in. I imagine you open the doors as you draw closer to the cabin. Um, the smell of the forest, you know, the fragrance of everything kind of uh, filling in. I imagine Bo has a cup of coffee in her hand. Outlaw stretches out and I, yeah, is asking for five, ten more minutes because she is just so beat up and tired. The cabin itself is a one story high with a bedroom and a bathroom, a living room, a few closets and a kitchen. The whole building is uh, made of wood. You see that the forest uh, is encroaching in. Uh, for a person who takes care of their cabin is there on a regular basis. Um, uh, maybe it's not as big of an issue, but here there's all kinds of detritus, uh, broken leaves, stones that kind of litter the landscape before you. Um, other notable things you might see as you get out of your vehicle and kind of look around is um, you can see a well and what appears to be a hatch for a septic tank. Um, other than that, um, oh, and you see an outhouse as well. Um, so that is what you see. The one story cabin. You see the forest kind of surrounding you. you. See the hatch for a septic tank. You see an outhouse. And you see a well. What would you guys like to do? I would like to scope out the outside of it. Um, just see if there's been a like entry recently sure as you look forced entry or anything like that as you look uh, around the building you do see no signs of forced entry I imagine you know as you feel more confident about that and you go and check the doors themselves and they appear to be locked oh no I forgot the key <laughs> <laughs> I was gotta, just about to say, I hope one of you picked back. up the key. <laughs> gotta drive back. <laughs> Now's the time to do some cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing we picked up the key. I mean, yeah. like you knew where it was. Yeah. <laughs> you did. I'm not gonna... <laughs> 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 That'd be real shitty. <laughs> so actually, you didn't specify that you picked up the key. Me. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I will use the key and open the door. Sure. Actually, the key's in my... No, I'm kidding. Uh, the key that you found from Bowman's apartment fits in the lock. Um, a cursory inspection. Uh, I... Uh, Bo reveals that no one has been here for at least two months. The cabin's interior is quiet, and there are more than a few cobwebs. Uh, aside from uh, some secondhand furniture and rustic decor, there are... Uh, um, yeah, that, that is what you would see. Sorry, I was still in my vapor. <laughs> no, that's fine. The cabin itself is one story high with uh, what appears to be one bedroom off to the side, a bathroom, a living room, a few closets, and a kitchen. Okay. 
You would see that um, there's a large uh, field stone chimney. I'm going to check the chimney out. Sounds good. You go over to check out the chimney. Let's go to Constance and Sienna. What are you guys doing? What else was outside? If I've forgotten. You see a... Um, outhouse and a septic tank. Yeah, and you a see a, a, an outhouse. You see the hatch for a septic tank. Um, and you also see a well. For the time being, I'm going to head into the cabin. Okay, you go into the cabin with a bow, and presumably you kind of start looking around as well. Sienna, how about you? Uh, I'm going to check out the well. Oh, well, well. Well, well, well. well. (laughs) Um, You go and check out the well, and uh, you see that... um, you see that the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You see a small electric pump attached to it that is uh, essentially, you would assume, responsible for bringing water into the cabin. Other than that, nothing strikes you about the, the well. Yeah, I got nothing. Okay. I don't know a lot about wells, so uh, I'll check out the outhouse as well. Sure. Uh, and since I just woke up and I slept like, shit, I'm going to maybe use the outhouse. It depends on how it looks. Sure. You look at the outhouse and it looks pretty old. Um, more than a few cobwebs, uh, similar to what I, I said for bow. Uh, nobody's really used this in... in months and so you open the door and i imagine you see cobwebs it does not look like it's been in order um doesn't look like it's been used for quite some time doesn't smell awful that's what you see I decide to just head inside with those two then. Sure. Um, You head inside into the uh, cabin and you notice the same things that uh, Bo did earlier. This is a small cabin with um, uh, one story high with a bedroom, a bathroom, a living room, a few closets and a kitchen. You would also see the kind of field stone chimney in the corner responsible for presumably heating uh, the cabin. I um, I keep wanting to say Irish. Bo, you don't notice anything odd about the the uh, the field stone chimney. Nothing on the inside. Nothing in the inside. You run your hands right. up and in. You don't see anything odd. All right, cool. Um, I guess I'll head to one of the rooms. Sure. So, I mean, there's um, the chimney. I'm sorry. The uh, uh, You're going to go into the kitchen. You're going to go into the bathroom. You're going to go into the bedroom. Where? I'm assuming you're already in the living room. Yeah. Um, I'll go into the, one of the bedroom, the, the, the bedroom. Sure. You go into the bedroom. What are you doing? Specifically looking in any place or just doing a cursory search of the area? I just want to have a look around. Uh, see if there's anything of note that could possibly be hiding information or documents or anything like that. Sure. Go ahead and roll me a search. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't fuck me. <laughs> Fumble. Fuck. Nice. <laughs> fuck. Um, We're doing well with the rolls today, guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of look all throughout uh, the bedroom, and uh, 
again, you're just making a lot of noise. Um, a lot of noise. Um, well, at least the neighbor won't come and complain. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do. I'm gonna look, come in and complain. No, you do look under the bed and you see a green foot locker. As it's happening, though, uh, from the outside, you just hear help, help. Uh, um, so I'll, I'll I'll run back to where they are and are you guys crawling for help? Wasn't me. No. I gotta look through a window. Yeah. Uh, why don't everybody roll me an alertness? Oh boy. Yeah, Bo, you're the only one that hears it. Just a very faint, help, please. I'm, tra I'm trapped, help. It's very faint. You swear to God you hear it from the outside. There's, there's someone calling for help outside. Wait, are you sure? I can I'm hear sorry. it. How, How can you hear anything more? after all the banging about that you've been doing? <laughs> I don't. How can you not hear it? Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna look through the window just to make sure it was like outside, just pranking us. <laughs> yeah, you go. Well, you look. You open up the window, and I imagine with that amount, um. Like, you can hear it uh, faintly. It's a little bit louder. And at that point in time, it becomes just loud enough for um, Constance to hear as well. Okay, maybe maybe you're not crazy. Oh, you hear it now. Don't give me that, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Where's so you have, you hear the sound outside. Are you going to track it down? You also did just find that green foot locker, and there's still other parts of the cabin to explore. Oh, yeah. There's a, uh, what there's would a, there's you a like foot locker under the bed. There's a foot locker under the bed. Is there somewhere in there calling for help? Or? <laughs> I think they're outside calling for help, but there's a foot locker under the bed. It's yes. a locked I, one. I'll tell you what, sure. I'll, go, I'll go check the foot locker under the bed while you two go and track down your imaginary voices. Okay. I will pull out my pistol. I will stand behind you. <laughs> <laughs> there's also a shed, by the way, which I missed. Um, oh. There's also a shed. So uh, my apologies about that. Um, okay. So you pull out your pistol and you begin to go outside bow looking around Constance is with you correct mm -hmm. okay Bo, you're just trying to track down the sound yeah sweet uh, I do want to point this out just because Aya you were looking out earlier so small retroactive thing because I made a mistake there is the mm -hmm. shed uh, is that something that you would like to have poked your head into as well because you're kind of poking your head into everything else yeah or... sure um as you poked your head in there earlier, you would have noticed an assortment of tools and four five-gallon cans of gasoline that appear to have all been recently filled. How recently? Like, within two months. Ooh. Um, like, it doesn't smell like old gasoline. Gasoline keeps for a good amount. So, um, all right, so... You begin to track down the sound, and you believe it's emanating from the septic tank, Bo and Constance. I have a torch, right? Yes. I was going to say that would be like the one thing that I did bring. <laughs> sure. Are we? Are we really? Are we doing? Are we looking in there? Is all we're doing? I mean. 
You do see the hatch. And as you draw closer to the septic tank, the sound is louder, becoming louder, and you hear, like, the banging as well. I will... I will, uh... Ready my pistol. If you shine the torch, we'll open it up. Mm-hmm. We can, uh, take a peek. Okay. I feel like this is, like, a part in a movie. Where the jump scare is about to happen. <laughs> and stupidly, they split up. Um, okay, so you make your way uh, towards the septic tank and begin to remove the hatch. And as you remove the hatch ever so slowly, we go back into the cabin with Ayana, who is going to the footlocker. Um, you notice that there's a lock on the footlocker, Ayana. Um, I see the key for the in the apartment. <laughs> so you have oh, the, you have so you guys have a, a key ring with a bunch of keys on it. Say, oh, it's, it's on oh, the same okay. key ring. Okay, okay. okay. However, Irish Bo has those keys. Nice. Okay. Um, what do you do? Uh, uh, Sienna? I'm going to head outside and uh, head towards Bo to ask for the keys. Sure. You head outside and you see that they are both going towards the septic tank, both Constance and Bo. Um, as you're drawing close, you too begin to hear the sounds of somebody crying for help in a, in a, in a very faint voice. Help! <laughs> Help! Um, maybe the banging of something against the sound. And as you draw close, um, you see the keys jangling off of Bo's. Perhaps she has a belt on. Um, and so you begin walking towards them. And what you see is them kind of like removing the like top of the hatch. And we go towards. Bo and Constance, as the hatch opens and you look down and you see a woman. You see just not uh, any person as you put the torch down into there. You see what appears to be a walking, talking, wasted corpse of a woman hair falling out in clumps skin almost sloughing off of her arms with exposed uh, muscle and bone um, she is naked I'm gonna need Constance and Bo to roll me a sanity check as they see this oh let me find that real quick. Where is that? Yeah, it should be near the top of your character sheet. Uh, actually, not. Point? Yeah, it's in the middle of your character sheet under statistical data. It's a green button. Sanity points. Okay. Go ahead and click on that for me. No modifier? Mm, no modifier. <laughs> that is a fail. <laughs> As a fail from. Constance and a <laughs> success from Irish. Uh, okay, so first off, uh, Irish, uh, yeah. Bo, good news is you're able to pretty much like hold yourself at bay, so you only lose one sanity point. Uh, so you'll go down okay. to 54, if you'll adjust that, please. Um, Constance, I need you to roll me a 1d8, and you will lose that much sanity from your character. Roll a one. Oh. Seven sanity. Yeah, All I right. immediately shut the hatch. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so yeah, you, uh, before you can say or do anything else, Bo, you see it and you're like, oh, God. Constance, you see this and you are just like, oh, God, and just like shove the hatch closed before anything can help. 
And as that's helping, as that's ha happening, you also just hear, "Oh God, help! Please help me! Oh God, I'm trapped here! <laughs> Somebody help!" And you hear that moaning, that crying, even though you've closed the hatch. Um, as you draw close, um, as you draw close. Sienna, I imagine you look and see a wild-eyed expression on um, on Constance's eyes. What are you guys doing? By the way, that was locked. the 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 top of the the hatch was locked, so you would have had to have opened it. So I'm assuming you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, we didn't. Can I be sane again? <laughs> How does the whole sanity system work, by the way? Can we have a little rundown? Shh, absolutely. So here's what is going to happen. Your sanity points, for all intents and purposes in Delta Green, will mostly go down. They will sometimes go up, but they'll mostly go down. Once you pass your breaking point on sanity, you develop a mental illness for your character. Um, and when that happens, you go temporarily insane. Now, if you get a high roll like that and you would instead, you want to choose to project that sanity loss onto one of your bonds, you absolutely can. And that will have uh, effects in our downtime phase. So that is an option that you have that I forgot to mention. If you choose to project that sanity loss onto one of your bonds, Constance. Mm -hmm. Probably a good idea. It's entirely up to you. If that's something you'd like to do, you absolutely can. Does it does it have to be kind of like all on or like all in on that? Is it do I have to split it? How does it? No, it will pretty pretty much be all in on one of those. Um, okay. Give me a second fully, here. Fully blaming my mentor for pulling me in on this then. Okay, fully blaming your mentor for, uh, here we go. Bond, uh, a bond can project your agent from sanity loss, protect your, uh, and <laughs> to offer a chance to repress <laughs> the effects of disorder or temporary insanity. Bonds are not merely motivations or things your agent likes. They're your agent's connection to humanity. Um, each bond begins with a score. We already did that. Um, let's see if there's some more rules here. Ah, there we go. Uh, see, repressing insanity, page 75. Okay. Repressing insanity. Sometimes it's easier to cope. You may attempt to repress the blind panic of temporary insanity or an acute episode of of a disorder by spending willpower. So my bad, you actually can't do this. You can only do that once you get to the breaking point. So you cannot okay. project right now. My apologies. We five points from breaking. <laughs> yeah, five points from breaking. All right, so what are you, uh, so the hatch is unlocked. It is closed. Your hands uh, are on it, Constance. You look around towards Sienna. Bo, you're right there, probably alarmed. Role play it out. How does how does how does all of this look? What's going on? What? There's like a what? A live corpse down there? Uh, what, what do you mean a live corpse? I mean like a, like a living dead person down there. Like they've like been a... down there for like twenty years or something. That like you ever watched like zombie movies or anything? Oh, yeah, but is that the voice you've been hearing? Yeah, yeah, that's the voice. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so, you know, have you thought about finding out why they're down there? Do you want to have a look? I'm going to open oh. the hatch again. Yeah, I'm taking my hands off the hatch. <laughs> All right, so you're taking your hands off the hatch and you're opening it, allowing Sienna to look down inside, correct? If wow. she wants to, I'm, I'm going to try and talk to it. Yeah, I'm going to come over anyway, because I'm kind of curious now. All right, Sienna, so you see the same thing. You see a, a withered, emaciated 
corpse of a woman, hair strands falling, naked, skin sloughing off. I need you to make me a sanity check as you witness this. And as you're doing that, Bo, what are you saying? Uh, she looks up to you like with one outstretched hand. Please help me. Please. Crying. Well, what, what's, your, what's your name? Tell me your name. She swallows. Uh, uh, I'm Marlene. She begins to kind of breathe heavily. It's his wife. How, do, how did you get down there? He, he, put, he put me down here. Your husband did? Yeah, yes, he did. Why, why I, did he put you down there? I was... I wasn't doing well. I was getting sick. And he... He... I don't remember exactly. He... Did some... Some, some prayer or... Or ritual. And there was... There was some... Uh, something happened. I... I... I, I, I wasn't... I was dying, but I was kind of stuck in this, this state. I, I, I don't know what happened exactly. I'm just kind of weeping forlornly. I'm going to look at the other two and be like, what the fuck do we do? Um, with, with my I'm gonna... knowledge of, of occult and things, could I maybe have a... Maybe I know some of these things that could happen, and it might make a little more sense. Sure, roll me an occult check. Oh, shit. <laughs> Watch me fail. Seven. Oh my god, you did! Success. Oh, something um, me. There are all manner of rituals that you know of all throughout mm -hmm. the world that are, um, that can do some pretty crazy shit. Um, prayers, rituals, um, ritual sacrifices all manner of things that can just absolutely um, do this type of thing mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest to the other two that we at least get her out of the septic tank get her into the cabin and we can continue the conversation in there I'm a little bit afraid of her um, um, I'll let you, you, you deal with that Okay, how is there a ladder going down it? Yeah, there's a ladder that's kind of like up at the top that you can kind of collapse and throw down it. I'm gonna throw down the ladder. All right. Um, she looks at you with just pleading eyes. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and she begins to kind of like raise like a trembling hand up to the ladder. She's like, light. And she begins to kind of like climb up and you see like her skin, like she's been down in this wet, dank area for so long. Like as she gets up, like as you draw, as she draws closer uh, to the, um, to the exit, to the top of the hatch, um, you see that her skin is uh, bluish gray where she still has some type of skin. Um, Thank you. My husband was a sick man who held terrible secrets. As she continues to kind of like make her way up. <clears throat> and she um, eventually gets out and she looks terrible. Um, she's been begging for air and for light and for, for anything like this. She just says, thank you. Thank you. Um, again, like you can see patches where there's muscle and bone um, and all manner of things. And uh, she looks towards uh, the the entrance of the cabin where you're trying to lead her. That's correct. That's what you're doing, correct? Mm hmm. Got you. Um. I mean, it's daytime. It's probably not the sort of conversation we should be having outside. <laughs> Absolutely. You do know that this is a pretty, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, secluded? Yeah, secluded. So you're not, I mean, like, obviously you should be mm. 
pretty fine. Um, does anybody have... So she's out at this point. She, she, she moves out. Um, you, you see uh, her flesh is gray blue. It's been torn out. Her hair, most of her hair has been torn out. Her hands are bloodstained, the flesh stripped by constant clawing at the walls for God knows how long. Her feet and lower legs are swollen from frequent immersion into the dank water underneath. Um, I just need I just need a bite to eat, and so she begins to make her way into the cabin with you guys. Um, uh, when she comes out, is there anything else that you do? Close the tank. Close the tank. Go ahead and roll me a, a Hume Int roll. Anybody who would like to. Oh, it's terrible. So bad at rolling. I mean, I may as well, right? I, I might as well. well. It doesn't hurt to give it a try. I, uh, you can't really tell what to make of her body language and mannerisms. Um, they're all strange, but I mean, if she's been stuck in a septic tank for all these years, unable to die, that should, you know, be no surprise. Um, you begin to, uh, bring her into, uh, the cabin and this walking corpse with you and, uh, she uh, kind of gets to the uh, threshold and, and she's like, I can't believe I'm free. Can I, can I have just a moment? To, can I just have a moment to myself? And she just kind of like looks down and just like starts weeping. Can um, I give her my my long coat because she's naked? Yeah, absolutely. You give her your long coat, cool. and she like go gratefully accepts it. I'm gonna turn to. Uh... Which one was the one that went for the footlocker? Sienna? Me, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to turn to Sienna and just be like, did you find the locker? Yeah, have you got the keys? Yes. I will hand her the keys. Okay. Okay. You hand her the keys and Sienna, you make your way uh, presumably towards the bedroom or do you do anything else? Yeah. I'm going to leave those two handling the wife. Got you. And head towards the bedroom. All right. Uh, so the two of you, um, Constance and Bo, kind of like maybe you get like a cup of tea or, or just do what you can to kind of help the wife. Uh, she eventually enters into the, the cabin and um, closes yeah, the door behind like you. And food or something in the kitchen. You can. Yeah, maybe there's like yeah, some old food. Yeah, you get some old food, um, or you get some food, maybe some like uh, stuff that doesn't necessarily spoil. Begin to take mm-hmm. care of it. What are you doing, Bo? I'm staying on edge a little. Mm-hmm. Just in case anything well. happens. Sure. Because it's a zombie. <laughs> I want to be friendly, okay? Yeah. Sienna, (laughs) you make your way into the bedroom and pull out the footlocker from beneath the bed, and you. The lock uh, comes uh, undone. And uh, you open up the. uh, You open up the locker. The first thing that you see atop the contents of the locker. Um, is a sealed envelope marked with a triangle in green ink. You would know this to be the kind of symbol of Delta Green. Um, 
the envelope uh, sits there uh, atop of a bunch of other contents. You see reels of tapes, uh, a small uh, a cardboard box. Um, you see uh, files. You see what appears to be maybe like a, some type of a knife, um, a mundane leather pouch, um, more files, a, a glass sphere, just all kinds of like little weird odds and trinkets. Um, what do you do? I want to open the envelope. Okay. You open the envelope and you find a note which I am uh, going to share with you and only you. You should be able to see it in just a moment in the handouts uh, area, Aya. And then I'm going to ask you to read it out loud when you see it. To whom it may concern. If you're reading this note, I can assume I've died or become incapacitated before I had the courage to complete my final mission. You will find you will find about 20 gallons of gas in the shed behind this cabin. Pour it into oh no. <laughs> Pour it into the septic tank beside the cabin and ignite it. You'd be happier if you didn't look inside. Please make sure that the remains are kept from my children. I am so sorry. God, please forgive me, Clyde Bowman. As reading that note, we shift the scene back into the living room where this withered uh, woman with a uh, long coat um, is being consoled by Constance with Bo kind of on high alert. In the flash of a moment, Bo. Uh -huh. Give me a second here. Oh, you know what? I forgot to share. Oh, that's fine. In the flash of a moment, Bo, the creature stands up quick as a flash and does its best to rush you specifically and go to claw you. Oh. We are getting into initiative, friends. Oh. So. <laughs> I'm <More> excited. <laughs> if only you'd let me have the keys before now. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, uh, <laughs> I was like, Okay, cool. All of it was very interesting. Let me go ahead and add you all to the initiative tracker here. And then I have to add something else to the initiative tracker. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. She's real gross looking. <clears throat> I've been trying to describe her as gross looking. Wait, you didn't think she'd be pretty, did you? No, <laughs> I just like because it, it came in really big. It was just the eyes. I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, so the way that this goes is uh, nobody rolls for initiative in this game. Initiative is just oh, okay. your dexterity score. So, Bo, what is your dexterity score? Uh, thirteen. Okay, thirteen. Constance, what is your dexterity score? God, ten. What? Ten. Ten. And Sienna, what is your dexterity score? Fourteen. Alrighty. <clears throat> Give me a second here. Marlene jumps out of her chair and rushes Bo, going to immediately try and claw her. 
So this will be an unarmed combat roll. I need to make that roll. I'm going to make it secret from you guys. Perhaps it's your military training or what have you, but as Marlene rushes you, you know what? Actually, this is even better. You already said that you're a bit on edge. Yeah. So she like slashes out at you and you just like jump out of the way uh, for a moment before she can land a hit. That is her turn. One move, one action. Sienna, you are up. You hear a bunch of kerfuffle from the living room. You are currently uh, kneeling over this footlocker. What are you doing? I'm going to quickly slam the lid shut on the footlocker and uh, go to the living room. You slam the, sh the the thing, you go to the living room, and sure enough, you see a bow in a corner, Marlene on top of her with like these like claws just like trying to rake her. Constance, you were just sitting beside this woman just a moment ago uh, trying to console her. Um, but Bo, you are next. What do you do? Um, I would have my, my, my combat knife on me, right? Yes. I'm going to use that against who? Okay. You whip out your combat knife and you attempt to make a melee attack against her. Go ahead and roll a melee attack under your character sheet. Oh. oh, let's see what happens. Three. That is a success. All right. So you're able to stab Marlene, slash her. Go ahead and roll the damage uh, associated with that particular attack. And I believe it's plus one because you're pretty strong. Yes. So you got a plus one to your damage. Your combat knife is a 1d4 plus one. Um, all right. So click on the green button uh, where it says 1d4 plus one. And it should allow you to roll right off of that. Four points of damage to Marlene. So as you attempt to slash Marlene, um, unfortunately, like not all of it really goes through. It gets tangled up in some of this like desiccated flesh. You realize that was a pretty good hit. It should have done a lot more to Marlene, but it barely does anything. Anything else kill you're it. doing? Kill it. Kill it. Get it down. Kill it. Constance, what are you going to do? Oh. <laughs> you know, I would, I'm going to run to the kitchen because assuming it's not that far from the living room. Like, mm -hmm. like a, uh, try and look for something that can be used as a weapon. Would I... Hmm. I mean, there are knives. It's pretty safe that you yeah. can grab like a butcher's knife or something. I was like more that. thinking, w watching that happen, would I? Could I make a judgment to look for something that's not a knife? So, like a yeah. like a. Um, you, you tell me what you're looking for. Like a bludgeoning thing. Yeah, uh, well, either, either something more blunt or like a like a lighter or something. A you know, like lighter. A lighter, like a blowtorchy oh. thing. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what would they keep in a wooden cavern, you know? Roll me a search, roll me a search roll. Oh, fuck. Your gut instinct is to look in the junk drawer for a lighter, <laughs> for something. <laughs> you pull open the junk drawer and there's no lighter or anything to be found. Well, I guess I will grab the frying pan that I previously heated stuff in. Let's go. Find a frying pan. It is Marlene's turn, and she's up on bow, and she is going to this time essentially... So you could do something called an aimed attack. Um, it will take minus 20% from your roll, but it will do, I think, twice as much damage. Oh, fun. Um... I need to double check on those that rule to be 100% certain, but I believe that is the case. Um, so when you see a minus 20, does that mean plus 20? Um, when you see a minus 20, no, it means it subtracts 20% from your roll. 
Oh, so the aim action will actually give you a, a plus twenty percent to your next roll, but you have to you have to actually utilize that. Um, all right, she's gonna go ahead and try and bite Bo. I think that's what she's gonna do. Yeah, don't let him bite me. <laughs> oh, called shot. That's what I'm trying to do. A called shot allows you your agent to shoot past, and if the attack is. Um, I don't know, okay. uh, making a call the Okay, so yeah, that that is that is actually it does do it. Okay, I did do that. All right, so she's call she's attempting to bite your neck. This will be oh. at a minus twenty percent uh, chance. So we'll see if it works. That is a thirty six on the roll. Now, Irish. You can choose to forego your normal attack to instead try to dodge or fight back or wait. Um, do you want to try to do anything? Because it looks like she's going in for your neck right now. Um, yeah, I want to try and dodge. Okay. Go ahead and roll your dodge for me. We'll see what happens, and and I'll figure. I'll describe it. Okay. All right. So here's how conflicting roles work in Delta Green. You succeeded, and she succeeded. So the next thing that happens is we compare the two roles, and whoever rolled the higher success. So if you rolled a thirty-seven or higher, you would have succeeded. Fuck. <laughs> so it does no. not. What the fuck? Let me double check. Let me double check. If you roll over, I want to. I want to double check to make certain I've got this right. In order, if you do this, become your single, becomes your sage in single action. Get bitten to into a zombie. And it's been nice knowing you all. Um, this is how the zombie apocalypse starts. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just point out that Sienna was the one that's like, yeah, let's get her in the cabin. I was totally going to leave her in the tank. <laughs> hey, you could have disagreed. Hold on. Yeah. She was too busy freaking out. Yeah, well, you should have left the, the, the lid shut, you know, when you had the chance. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you open it up again. No, I didn't. Bo did. Mm. I opened it up. <laughs> yeah, it has to beat the attacker's roll. That's yeah. the thing. So yes, so it, she will bite your neck. This is going to do double damage. This is going to hurt Irish. Oh. This will be oh, this will be two d eight plus four. This is how I die. Oh my god. No. This might be how she dies, honestly. We'll see. If you die, we're all I dead. have 15 hit points, dude. Nine points of damage. <laughs> as Marlene, like, like, just like, bites down into Bo's neck, where there's no armor. Actually, I guess your armor would come into it. Do you have any armor on? I guess I do. Do you have... Did you put on a flak jacket or anything like that? I, it's very important. Tactical body armor. It says I've got tactical body armor. Okay, that is minus three. All right, so six points of damage as Marlene like bites into the soft spot in your neck and just tears out a chunk and there's a spray of blood. Um, all of you are observing violence, so I need everybody to make a sanity check. Oh boy. Me too. Yes, you too, because you're being you're the one uh. that the violence is happening against. Oh jeez. Oh boy. Amazingly, oh my god, I uh that's a crit fail. I was fine. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that means you lose the max amount of sanity that you can for this roll. So it's no one D eight. If it's eight, you just lose eight. Uh, so I just have to find this really quick. I wish I had that table readily available. 
Oh, here we go. Suffering violence. Uh... Stabbed, strangled, or shot, suffer a permanent sun on fire, be tortured. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a D4 for Irish, so you will lose zero. You're fine. Um, outlaw and uh, suffer a sun on fire, reduce ambush, find a corpse or a mingled carcass, inflicting, kill a. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say this looks terrible. Uh, I. Outlaw, roll a d6. Aya, you immediately just lose six uh, sanity. Oh my period. God. I'm at my breaking point. Oh no. Okay, Constance is at her breaking point. Okay, <laughs> now you can choose to project Constance. One hundred percent. How dare Becky make me watch fucking zombie films i hate her okay okay absolutely <laughs> all right so that's going to be inflicted on your score uh becky from drama class you take becky. six <laughs> points of sanity um uh uh sienna uh how does that what's going through her mind as she sees this horrific thing kind of blaming myself right now for uh, you know <laughs> suggesting <laughs> we bring her into the ca hey i wasn't the one that fed her uh let me just point that out and that was that was, that was uh, we thought oh I, yeah let's I'm, make us I'm, some food I'm, I'm near my breaking point guys oh. look it's not it's not a it's not constance that fed her it was actually Bo through her own flesh <laughs> All right. That is Marlene's turn. Sienna, you are up. What are you going to do? Uh, okay. I I assume I just got to the living room. I'm going to look around for something to grab to you know, use as a do you, makeshift do you, weapon. Do you have your gun on you? Because I did say earlier you have it. A I medium pistol, do. if you'd like to utilize it. Go on, then. Is that what you'd like to use? Yeah, this sounds crazy. All right, it's a 40% chance. You can aim for an additional 20% chance, but that will take up this turn. So do you want to aim or shoot? Having seen her just rip a chunk out of Bo's neck, I'm going to shoot. Makes sense. Go ahead and roll uh, your hit. That little green die at the end of the weapons area. Fumble. Oh, my oh God. Lord. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't you shoot me. <laughs> you just shoot So Bo? here's here's the thing. You might actually shoot Bo. Oh, no. Oh, I'm going to have I'm going to have you roll a, a, a luck roll. It's up at the top there. Um, that green uh, die. Uh, it's, it's under the statistical data by sanity points. Roll a luck roll. If you roll under 50. It means you do not shoot her. If you roll 51 or higher, you oh, do. Oh, okay. Uh, you okay, do shoot. I, I rolled the wrong one. No, 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 no. You don't roll it. Aya rolls okay, okay, the okay, Lux. Okay. Okay. Oh. okay. Oh, boy. You do not shoot a bow, which could have killed her. <laughs> uh, but your gun jams up. Shit. Your gun jams up. That is your turn. Uh, Bo, you are up. You took your... your turn to try and dodge the blow and it was unsuccessful so um what is going through Bo's mind i just want this fucking thing off of me gotcha constance you are up uh um oh boy i oh i guess i'm gonna run over to molly and try and smack her in the head <laughs> right <laughs> but oh let's do God. it all right, Let's go, go ahead and roll me a melee attack. Let's see if it's successful. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> that is a miss. Oh. Just woof, goes right over Marlene's head. We're at the oh, top. Of, we <laughs> we're at the top of round three here. It went four. <laughs> All right, it is Marlene's turn. She sees that everybody's uh, gathering up, and she's going to take one last attack on Bo with a claw. So that's the first thing that Marlene is going to do. D100 roll. That is a natural 100. That is an automatic crit fail. 
from Marlene. Ah. Marlene brings back a claw, and I imagine this time, Bo, you dodge just in time as her hand just like slams down into the counter, and you hear a sickening like crack as that happens, and she like yelps a little bit, and she looks at all three of you kind of gathering around, and she just bolts off towards the window. That is her turn. Sienna, you are up. What are you going to do? I'm going to try and get my gun on jams. Okay, I'm going to say it's going to take you a, a, just a round. You essentially, you're able to clear okay. you the, 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 uh, the misfire from your gun. You cock it back. You get ready to shoot next turn. That is your turn. Bo, you're up. You're bleeding from your neck. What are you doing? I'm going to take my gun out and shoot this bitch in the fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which gun are you taking out? Um... Pistol. Okay, you also have an assault carbine, just so you're aware. I do. What would that count as? Just firearms? Yep, all of its firearms. If you'd like to use it, you can utilize that. Yeah, okay, I'll use that. You pull out your assault carbine. That's your move. You aim, shoot. Go ahead and roll that die. We'll see what happens. So do I use on, do I use but... the firearms die or do I use the the actual assault carbine die? Use the assault carbine die because that will use your firearms score. Oh no! Fuck. Another fumble. <laughs> Eighty four. Shit! You know what? This is perfect, actually. Um, so you fire and it misses her. It goes right over her shoulder. But it breaks the window that she was running for. <laughs> and she looks back at you with a wicked grin. Uh, Constance, you are up. I tried to talk to her. What are you going to say? I don't have anything to do. Huh? I am going to. Oh, I'm going to tell her that Clyde is, is dead and her suffering can be over if she just calms down. <laughs> Being a Please. Karen right now, Marlene. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you have this last ditch effort. Um, go ahead and roll me Persuade. Like, you can't get revenge. I, I don't know what to tell you. Where's my Persuade? Oh, you beauty. She pauses for a moment. Looks back at you guys. I know he's dead. This body is rotten. And I need a new one. Let me go, or it will be hers. And she points towards Bo. Ah. Oh, man. Is there, is there not a, a third option here, Marlene? I can't let you take her body, but you, we, you can't leave here. You can't... Oh, man. I think I can do whatever I want. What about your children, Marlene? She smiles a wicked grin. Yes, Marlene's children. They would be excellent new hosts. Oh boy, there's, there's no talking to this now, is there? Put her down! <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything! All you right. got a frying pan! <laughs> Constance, anything else? Can I throw my frying pan? <laughs> <laughs> sure, go ahead and throw your frying pan. How am I going to roll for this? I have no idea what to roll. You're going to go, uh, go ahead and just roll me a melee weapons for right now. 
Sweet. Sugar. <laughs> you throw the frying pan and it hits the wall, bouncing off down onto the ground as Marlene smiles wickedly and begins to make her way, because it is her turn, through the window. Jumping through, she leaves some tattered, desiccated flesh behind on the shards of glass with murky, dark blood as she begins to run towards the forest. Sienna, it is your turn. How far into the forest is she? Like, can I still shoot her from here? You can absolutely shoot her from there. Then I will. Shoot the bitch in the fucking leg. I'll try. Okay, go ahead and roll me your firearms check and we'll find out what happens. Come on, I really wish we won in England right now. (sighs) Right. Oh, right. I, uh, that Ooh. is a hit. Go ahead and roll me damage. Nice, nice, nice. Good job, good job. Nice. Nice. Seven. Uh, so you hit her in the shoulder. You see, like, as she's, like, just sprinting, <laughs> hits her in the shoulder, and she just snarls back in your direction. But she still is sprinting. It is Bo's turn. How far can I move without taking up the full um, round? I mean, she's sprinting. You could probably move to the open glass that she broke through and try a shot from there. Unless yeah, you want to try that. and like get out of the house and like run her down. I'm gonna. I'm, no, I'm gonna try and uh, shoot her. Okay, go ahead and roll that firearm. Come on, don't fuck me. Ah! That is a success, 32%. Go ahead and roll me. uh, Okay, so first off, your assault rifle has what is called a lethality rating. That means it is a 10% chance to just kill somebody outright without just doing damage. Go ahead and roll me a D100, and if you roll a 10% or under, that is a success. So where it says lethality, hit the lethality one. Okay. The ten percent on lethality. But... Okay, does not automatically kill her. Go ahead and roll that D twelve. Oh, it says normal. Da- you know what? We'll just take that damage right there too. Eleven points of damage with armor piercing three. You see, like you like light her up uh, in in her back, and you see like blood uh, and chunks of flesh uh, come out. Uh, she is uh, hurting quite a lot, but she is still sprinting. Constance, I'm a good shots, guys. Well done. Just really <laughs> motivate everyone around me, and that's Fine. that's. <laughs> what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna watch. <laughs> I'm gonna watch everything. Okay, Constance, you're just gonna watch. It is round five. It is Marlene's turn. She is sprinting. You can barely see her in the forest. If you do not bring her down this turn round, she will escape. All of you, because she's in the forest, have a minus twenty percent chance to your firearms to hit her from where you are. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> okay. It is uh, Sienna's turn. Okay, well, we can't let it get away, so I'm gonna try and swing to her. All right, go ahead and roll that <sighs> medium pistol. Remember, you have a minus 20% chance to hit her. Okay, so do I need to. Do roll that something? green button at the end of medium pistol. Wish me luck. That is a fail. (laughs) Hits off into the forest. You see chunks of bark come off. Bo, minus 20% chance to hit. Can I start chasing after her? So you would like to go through the broken window and attempt to get closer to get a clearer shot, is what you're saying. Yes. That is fine. However, I'm going to make you make a, an athletics roll. I think it's athletics. 
yeah, roll me in athletics to see whether or not you are able to get through the glass without injuring yourself. Oh, boy. Oh! Okay, that is a success. You only slightly cut yourself and take one point of damage. All right, I put you down from nine to eight. Um, you're able to run off. I'm going to still give you a minus 10% chance to hit. Okay. But it does lower your does lower that uh, penalty a bit. You're a Marine, so it makes sense. You jump out the window, you get into a stance, you take a breath, you get ready to pull the trigger, time slows down. That is under 50%, that is a hit. Go ahead and roll me the lethality first. That is a 10% chance to kill them outright. 59. Oh, so close. With a (laughs) 4. Teen. How wait? How does it even do fourteen points of damage? It can only do one d twelve. It's two d twelve, I think. Oh no, it is. It's one. Oh. But it says it says. Uh, where was it? Where was I looking? I was looking somewhere and it said like times two. Where was I looking? What the fuck? Uh, oh yeah, one of your earlier rolls, it was like, it, when you fumbled it. Yeah, yeah, when I fumbled it, it was times two. I shot the window open. Okay, let me look at your character sheet real quick here. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. I, was I think it was a crit, but it was like... I uh, haven't touched it! <laughs> <laughs> Repeating weapons damage. I'm going to roll this a couple of times just to see what's going on here, Irish. Uh, give me a second. That roll doesn't count. Okay, that does... Do me a favor and just roll the die that says damage 1d12. Okay. Because I don't know where that 14 is coming from. Seven. Armor piercing three. Marlene uh, is... What did you get on your lethality reading? Did we roll that? Um, we didn't. Go ahead and roll that lethality. They're just the button that says lethality. I think I did, though, didn't I? Oh, did you? Is it? Is that what it does? Oh, yeah, I guess that is what it does. That's, maybe that's the le- where the 14 and the 3 come from. Yeah, maybe the lethality thing got it. Okay, so we won't roll lethality for damage anymore. You hit okay. Marlene. Um, she does not look to be doing well. Stumbles a few times. Looks like she's about to fall down. Before running off into the forest, as you hear, Fuck. Ch- 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 the three of you are left behind at the cabin. What do you do? Call Henry. Yeah, I was gonna say we're gonna have to call it in. Yeah, who picked up the phone? I feel like I would have... Oh no, none of us did. (laughs) I feel like I would have still tried to chase after her. Hmm. So you'd you'd like to still try and chase after Marlene, is what you're saying? You know what? If you get a success... She's pretty hurt. She's pretty hurt. I'll tell you what. She's 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 a military lady. Roll me an athletics check first to see if you can keep up with her. You are bleeding profusely. So I'm going to have that actually... I'm going to I'm say that gives you a minus 20% on your athletics check. Okay, you're successful in running. Now, uh, there is the equivalent of a... And you're pretty much off on your own at this point, right? Everybody else is back yeah. in the cabin. I could die here. <laughs> Good. Go ahead and roll me a survival check to see if you're able to see the blood. Because she is, because it's pretty bad, I'll give you a plus 20% to this roll. So if you get 30% or under, you do not. (laughs) She is off into the wind. Um, Give me a second here. You don't 
You feel like you do not know where she went. As this is going on and Bo is alone bleeding in the forest, we go back to the cabin. There's a broken window, a phone in the hand of Sienna. Are you giving it a call? Yeah, I'm going to call. Uh, rings for a few moments. Yes, um, agents. What We've is... We've got a situation. What is the situation? We've got a... Walking corpse uh, escaped into the forest. Extremely injured. Uh, Bo's gone after her. We thought you should know. Your new mission is to contain the threat as it always is in Delta Green. Do whatever you have to. Contain the threat. Make certain no one do nobody knows about the threat. Keep it, it. hidden. Do you need more resources? Yes. We want a whole zombie hunting team. Thank you. <laughs> Helicopter. The best I can offer you is a surgeon on standby. We might need one. And I imagine as you do that, you look at Bo, who's walking back towards the cabin, and she's just like bleeding from her I neck. I feel like I, I would have had like I've got field dressings. I would have like pressed one against one neck as I walk through. Yeah, so you got like a big old one of those big old white gauze pads pressed up yeah. to your neck, soaking in as much blood as you possibly can. Makes absolute sense. Um, hundred percent. What is Constance doing? Uh, helping Bo as much as she can, which is probably not very much. Okay, walking over to Bo, doing what you can to help her out. Okay. We will leave the scene there. A cabin. I really wish Linus was in the woods. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Uh, Empty. And uh, walking back towards the cabin, the three of you looking at uh, the empty septic tank with one eye, looking towards the broken glass with another. And finally, uh, with Bo walking toward, you can see Bo walking towards the cabin through like the hole where the broken glass is. The smell of must in the air from this old uh, cabin and wood underneath. So the slow creaking and groaning of a structure that has stood against the tides of time. But the camera goes into the bath or the, the bedroom where sitting atop the, uh, sitting on the carpet next to the closed footlocker with other things. We see the note from Clyde Bowman with, but it focuses in on the very last line. I'm so sorry. God, please forgive me. As the screen goes black and that will end our first session. Man, it's so good. It's scary out here. <laughs> we almost got it. You almost died. Fuck, dude. <laughs> yeah, he <was> so close. <laughs> all, all cards on the table had two hit points left. Oh, Are you serious? I'm dead serious. What? Three. Oh, if only we won in England and I could have had a gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You know what's funny is I was thinking to myself, I was like, the only people who are playing are are those folks from England. So I'll try and like I'll try and like I'll change the details so that it's actually in England. I think that'd be kind of a fun <laughs> nice. little touch. Uh, but I didn't even think about that. The I was like after <laughs> that that round, where I was like, okay, good job, everyone. I, it came into that bit, and you're like, oh, okay, now everyone's got minus twenty. I was like. I was totally gonna take Bo's pistol from her belt and shoot it, uh, but, but, but it was already at minus twenty, and my firearms is only twenty. Uh, <laughs> you would have had a one percent chance. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know that this is this is uh, good for the next time. Um, so yeah, you guys have a, a foot locker of other stuff to look at. You have uh, this person yeah, running off down. into the forest. Yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff. So this is a good place to end. All right, guys, I hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. Did. Yeah, Thanks. thank you. Very welcome. Um, and for those who are watching, thank you very much for watching. And um, tune in next week. The plan is to play this every Wednesday between um, 1 to 4 Central Time. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day.